This one's called, It's a Business Doing Pleasure With You. <laughs> I can't wait till you get tired of doing this. No, nah, it's happened already. Uh, this is I didn't do it for the second segment. Um, <laughs> it's the oldest profession. And the women puppeteers of this profession. Is it podcaster? Yeah. The women puppeteers of this profession, the madams, the have been plentiful and have passed from one to the next with characteristics similar to a cutthroat corporate coup. Today, I'll be talking about one of the madams I've been very interested in for some time now. I keep seeing pictures of her in crime books of from like the 30s and 40s. And I'm like, well, I know what she did. I know that she's a madam, but I don't know much about her. Today, I'll be talking about Brenda Allen, Madam mm. to the Stars. Mm. Uh, her real name is Mary Mitchell. She also went by the name sure. Brenda Allen Burns, and she also went by the name Marie Balanek. Is it Bella Neck? Do you want to see it? Yeah. Balonk? Bal- is it Balonk? Balonk. I put Balanek. Okay, so not much is known about Brenda Allen's upbringing. We don't know where she's from, but we do know her real name is Mary Mitchell. We also don't know much about her later years in life, so it seems like she exists solely in the years from the 30s to the 50s. Do <laughs> you give- think she was a replicant? She might have been a replicant. Uh, I've only seen the first Blade Runner. <laughs> Maybe, is the second Blade Runner about I've, 50s I've only, Los Angeles? Uh, okay, 2050s. Oh! <gasps> It's um, uh, mid-century Los Angeles, but a different century. I've only seen the first six cuts of Blade Runner. I don't get that. <laughs> I've only seen six hours of behind-the-scenes footage and a bunch of people telling me it's a really important movie. I don't, uh, I don't get that. Um, I bought an Atari. What more do they want? <laughs> I never thought I'd hit a movie that Harrison Ford would have said, but here we are. Six days, seven nights. Uh, let's but give I, a... Uh, Morning Glory is the work cut of Morning Glory. You, you <laughs> think that he might not be actually be a news broadcaster. All right. What's back a, to your sex talk you. or whatever. It's, uh, it's Calm down. Okay. I know you're getting herny over there. <laughs> Super uh, That's why we have to watch out for this table wiggling. What's that? Is that a dog running on a table? Yeah, it's a dog. Let's give a brief history of the madams who came before Brenda Allen. It should be said up front. Yeah, not all of them. That goes, of course, back to it's the little profession. Probably goes back to the you know 17th century, but not in this case because I just want to talk about 20th century madams. 17th century. Yeah, 17th that, century madams. I mean, it's the oldest profession. There have been professions before the 1800s. No, I'm just saying in Los Angeles because it was someone was selling someone's flesh earlier than that. Let's go to the, the archives. You think Michael Holland has yeah. uh, documents on that? He's got Receipts? all the used diaphragms of. Of, they all made a wood. Um, okay, so it should be said up front that the cops... We should have be, children listening to this now. It should be said up front that the cops in this era, the 20s to 30s, were clearly on the take. It wasn't just that era, obviously, but you know what I mean. For any madam that I talk about, there are cops that have been paid to offer security and mm-hmm. clearance for all this stuff. The current madam, whoever the she second is... second oldest profession. What's the first one, cops? No, the oldest profession is prostitution. Second oldest is cops being paid cops to being protect paid prostitutes. To protect, yeah. <laughs> they, later, they were given badges. Um, so whoever the current madam is... They didn't need them because they stunk. Stinking badges, not the prostitutes. Thank you. I, I, I got it at, by the third sentence. I figured out what you were doing. I think the badge is a replicant. Go on. Please don't make Blade Runner the joke that runs throughout this episode. <laughs> I really late. hate that. I would really hate that <laughs> if that was a thing that happened. So whoever the current madam is could usually count on the cops to give a pre-raid warning to clear out some of the customers or Johns whose names were pretty big. First, Almost as big as... Stop that. I was trying to add flavor to the joke. <laughs> I mean, we were talking about Big. You heard that thump. <laughs> so first there was Lee Francis, who was quite generous to the police department for the arriving vice squad who'd kick in the door or whatever. She'd offer chilled French champagne and Russian caviar and was waiting for them. <laughs> After no one was getting arrested, the officers would sit down and enjoy their royal treatment. <laughs> so they would kick down the door and then sit down and, and have champagne. Down, yeah. and, <laughs> and they would go through the formalities of like, blah, 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 fill out paperwork and then throw it away and then eat all the food. <laughs> Do you have saltines? <laughs> There's a prostitute named Saltine. At some point, she <laughs> must. Have, at some point, she must have missed a payment or whatnot, or put the wrong caviar because she was arrested and spent 30 days in jail for morals charges. And if you're thinking what damage could be done in 30 days when you're not, you know, around your business, know that she was quickly usurped by Ann Forrester, who was dubbed by the police the Black Widow. I don't know why they would call her that because they all work for her. During the late 30s, after some time running a lavish prostitution business, the Black Widow was raking like. $3,000 a week and collected like big time Hollywood clientele. I can't get in names on anybody. But supposedly the files containing names of the male customers was obviously with any madam, you got to look out for your little black book, but I, I can't find any. They keep the names of the customers in yeah. the little black book? Yeah. So like all the big Hollywood stars, you get your name and what you like and what girls you like and how much uh, you pay okay. in a book. This is why every madam has to protect her book, obviously, but I can't find any online. I just want a PDF well, of a well protected. Yeah, I want a PDF did you check it. under her mattress? <laughs> is that a PDF? Is that a server? <laughs> From what I can tell. Under her mattress. <laughs> Mattress.org. Don't so, go there. <laughs> Please, kids, don't go there. From what I could tell, Guy McAfee, who was a former vice cop, we talked about him in the booze episode, was the boss of the business for Forrester, and it was the Black Widow that managed his prostitution business. She was the one who took in Brenda Allen. According to Mickey Cohen's book, Brenda was turned out, quotations, whatever that means, <laughs> in San Bernardino, where she, and then she ended up in Los Angeles after that. She made her professional debut as a teenage streetwalker in a seedy stretch of West 6th Street between Union Avenue and Alvarado, sort of where the famous cop stop the Pacific Dining Car is around there. I could see that. Yeah, see that too. So <laughs> I'm sure someone's there right now. Let's 
Get in the car. Um, <laughs> the she, dining car. <laughs> she was discovered by Forrester and was taken off the street and into a pricey brothel. Under McAfee, Forrester ran multiple houses of prostitution, promising girls net incomes of $304 a month and overseeing, managing, pimping, explaining whatever you want to call it, about 200 women. That's like half the women in the city at the time. There was 400 women in 1920. Um, That's 51% of the population of women. Her reign came to an end and she was convicted of pandering and went to jail. Pandering. At, pandering. Selling ladies. Oh. At Forrester's trial, Mayor Fletcher Bowron, you know, the famous reform mayor unsuccessfully pleaded for a lenient sentence because quote her information was of great value in determining the identity of those police department members whose honesty was questionable hmm, shady so she's arrested in 1940 and sits in a jail on charges of running a white slavery ring i read an article the article went over the court transcripts which i couldn't find and this line was used get ready for it the black widow preyed on the sexual innocence of young women but worse yet was associated with interracial sexual commerce <laughs> okay worst generation ever <laughs> thanks her testimony also provided a window into the business operations of a Los Angeles organization called The Syndicate, which you remember again for the alcohol episode, mm-hmm. consisted of a group of men, Charles Crawford, keep that name in your mind, Kent Kate Perrot, Guy McAfee, and some others. Do the right antivirus now. guy? Yeah. It's a joke that you made before. Um, <laughs> I made that about Norton Simon, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's listen to all our episodes and all the, jo- the throwaway jokes that we have. Believe me, they should be thrown away. <laughs> <laughs> the Syndicate had a, a group of men who had absorbed many brothel operators and sex workers into a more top to bottom, meaning hierarchy, not innuendo, top to bottom <laughs> business structure which succeeded to nine which succeeded in dominating not only prostitution but also gambling illegal liquor um, smuggling in the city their power came from the fact that they of course ran city hall they were the city hall gang so no one was going to get in trouble because consequences for for other people so even if forrester squeals on them so what no one can do anything about it so she served four years for this for pandering she must have not paid the right people and we know that even 30 days away from your business is too long so it's 1940 who's going to take over but of course the 21 year old shapely statuesque redheaded party girl herself Brenda Allen. Although I heard by 1948 she was 36, so I don't know how old she was by 1940. Let's just say she was 28. Older woman, beautiful. Uh, <laughs> 28. So, 20, a beautiful older woman. She's 28. Uh, <laughs> with the door wide open and the well-tuned operation that the Black mm-hmm. Widow had set up already, Madam Brenda Allen became the Empress of Alley Vice, selling dirty, that's what we're going to call Whoopi, to 1940s I'm era making millions. Dirty. I'm making dirty here. She's selling dirty to 1940s era's millionaires and movie stars. I read this in an LA Times article. Brenda Allen was a teetotaler with a hint of Southern drawl. She had a mind like a cash register. Having she to gave s- exact change? Yes, yeah, she gave exact change. She went with her mouth. <laughs> That's all I could read without having to subscribe to time. She was always all friends with crime lords Mickey Cohen and Bugsy, I almost killed Goebbels, Siegel. <laughs> Brenda was cautious in many regards and others not so much. Instead of running a brothel that had like a centralized location, a body house, a house of ill repute, if you were. Cat Allen- ranch? Cat ranch, if you will. A rabbit house. Changed a rabbit her- tunnel. No, that's an act. <laughs> Brenda Allen ran a telephone exchange service to communicate with clients. By 1948, she had 114 pleasure girls slash sex workers in her harem and she was raking in about nine thousand dollars a week from oh this. my god did they do phone sex too oh, did that pro- exist i mean they had to they had radio programs right it matched the time the entertainment of the time <laughs> now Operator. talk like the shadow <laughs> <laughs> only the shadow knows where to kiss your mouth um i don't know how whoopee works the girls were analyzed as to their more intimate characteristics which were then carefully noted on file cards for cross tabulation with their clients preferences gross brenda oh, allen would take 50 percent off the top a third going to pay the corrupt cops doctors lawyers and bail bondsmen and the rest was divided amongst the girls. Her call girl service ran out of her apartment at Casa Fedora which still stands at 861 South Fedora which is close to Vermont Avenue and James M. Wood Boulevard in Koreatown and now it goes by Fedora Woods which sounds like the name of a golfer or something. <laughs> she could be reached by phone designation and this is real H O two five five five. Now she didn't run like overtly sex work. She ran an ad for her business though and anybody in the know knew what she was selling. She ran an ad in the players directory which is published by AMPAS. It was later discovered that the clientele was made up of 250 entertainment industry figures, politicians, and gangsters, which is why she's referred to as the Madam to the Stars. She distributed her phone number to select cabbies, bartenders, and bellhops to put the word out to the classiest clients. It was rumored that she ran a Dun and Bradstreet check on prospective customers to ensure their suitability. I can't tell if this next fact is what cautious. What does that mean? Dun and Bradstreet isn't like they don't they check your finances and stuff. Dun and Bradstreet? I've yeah. never heard of that before. Maybe it's old. I looked it up and I forgot. Eh, people listening probably know. <laughs> They're all old. Except for those kids. Except for that 9 year old who can't listen anymore. Sorry, kids. Not this one. Well, we're doing pets next month. Dead pets. No. <laughs> <laughs> this next fact, I can't tell if it's reckless or not. She boasted that she would never spend a day in jail, though she went to jail many times. <laughs> Brenda Allen, what's your secret? Well, one thing that Brenda Allen, aside from her previous madams, is that she was in a relationship with the LAPD sergeant, Elmer Jackson. As the LA Times put it, her lover and business partner. And I'm going to henceforth refer to him as Mr. Brenda Allen. It's cautious in a way that she has a trust with the LAPD beyond a financial 
financial transaction. Although he was getting $50 per week from each girl, so roughly $5,000 a week. This relationship kept her business safe from the entanglements from the law, which along with how she ran her business helped her thrive. And although I can't tell if she was having another relationship with another LAPD sergeant, Charles Stoker or not, he was getting paid too. But the LAPD was on the verge of changing. This is three years away from the Parker years of LAPD. We haven't gotten into Chief William Parker yet, but he single-handedly reformed LAPD from being criminals to more secretive criminals. <laughs> That's uh, a lot of money. $50 per girl. Per girl. Like, is that for one night of work? They're making $50 from one of these people? No, no. He's getting $50 per girl, but she's making probably more than that. More than that? Like, That's a lot of money for the 40s. Is there a yeah. coupon code? Yeah, but it's a dirty word. You can get arrested <laughs> for it. Use promo code SCANDALOUS. <laughs> Parker was uh, on the verge of coming in, so a lot of the old oh, orders... Oh, yeah, he was. A lot of the, Sorry, kids. the old established orders Pets. were about to crumble. Um, you Done? <laughs> you done warning kids about something that we didn't say? Oh, we, oh, said, we it. said it. They could piece it together. They're smart. P sit, which oh. is a command some of those guys liked. <laughs> to dogs that they walk, right? I'm For confused. pets next month. Pets next month. So it's February 1947, and Brenda Allen and Mr. Brenda Allen, Sergeant Jackson, are sitting one night. Sergeant Mr. Brenda Allen. <laughs> one night they are sitting in the car outside of Brenda Allen's place, Casa Fedora. They're necking. Oh. And there's an attempted robbery. The stick-up man was a Roy Pee Wee Lewis who had targeted Allen and Jackson because he believed Jackson would have the payoff money that Allen delivered every month for police security. Lewis stuck a machine gun into the open window of the car where Jackson and Allen were necking and demanded money. Jackson pretended to be reaching for a wallet but pulled out a bullet wallet instead. That's a gun. That's where he keeps his bullets safe. Lewis shoots Jackson but Jackson fires back and kills Lewis while his getaway driver sped off. That's all fine and dandy but not all the payoff money in the world could keep the presses away. So Jackson had to tell the police that Allen was a PD stenographer which how would they not know that she isn't they work for the department but that was concrete evidence but it wasn't revealed until a year later by the daily news that it was actually brenda allen nobody knew for a while their liaison was revealed which of course was a huge scandal along with that one of their telephones was tapped that's a thing that parker and his pal robert kennedy were huge fans of but this recording was brought to you by electronics engineer j arthur vouse this wiretap brought, to you, brought by to you by j arthur vouse if you like the wiretaps from the cohen's and <laughs> this wiretapping further cemented the relationship, a relationship that was revealed to the world by Mickey Cohen when they were trying to bring the hammer down on Cohen. This was like his ace in the hole. This exposed a huge corruption in LAPD and of course was one of the last straws in an aging crime syndicate before a huge reform swept through. Allen and Jackson were finally arrested after Allen was caught trying to recruit a young girl named Audrey Davis to her harem who turned out to be a police lady. Hmm. The key players in Allen's operation included not only Jackson and Stoker, but other vice cops paid to protect sex workers. The scandal forced police chief Clemens Horrell into early retirement. His place was temporarily taken by former Marines Corp William Wharton, who was eventually replaced by hard-nosed William Parker, who of course led the LAPD reform. Her arrest shook up the Hollywood elite, which instantly began buzz with rumors about a little black box containing the names of 250 clients coming out, but uh, nothing and no, now no it's evidence. a black box? Yeah, it's interesting, because we might have a black box coming up in one of the later ones. Well, uh, there isn't, but, you know, airplanes. Airplanes. Uh, <laughs> the idea of one. Uh, the idea of technology that would have <laughs> later existed. Would have existed, but did it in this case. It could have helped, but yeah. Of, of course, it wasn't there. <laughs> well, they did find her little black book. Brenda Allen was was giving off a sonar signal. Nah, that's the only thing I found. Brenda Allen was sentenced. <laughs> and her teeth. That hurt my feelings and nothing else we said hurt my feelings. That hurt my feelings <laughs> a little bit. Brenda Allen was sentenced to only one year in prison serving just eight months with a five-year probation. So what? what is her crime exactly? Just selling, being a madam? Being a madam selling okay. ladies for sex. All right. Also like paying police officers. Although that's yeah, on okay. them more yeah. than her but still the fact that she did that doesn't uh, feel good. We're not guilty. You're guilty. You're guilty. You, they, took, the you took the money. I'm not, we don't have the money. Where's our money? It's not a crime to offer you money for you protection. Off, though. <laughs> the sentence that Jackson and Stoker were given are unknown. I don't know why. A short time after her release, Allen married former Navy pilot Robert Cash. Hmm? But they filed for always going for cash. But they filed for divorce just after a few years. Brenda Allen's immediate successor in 1950 was was 29 year old Barry Ben. Um, sorry, yeah, Barry Benson. I think it's a lady who conducted business in the 13 room Moorish Castle with red and purple rooms on Schuler Road, north of Sunset Strip. Uh, Oh. Benson's business was uh, malfunctioning. He must be a replicant. Uh, I don't get that. He must have heard a poem about a bird and malfunction. <laughs> Benson's business was the first one to go under after William Parker took over. Brenda Allen retired into obscurity and died in 1968. It's literally all we know about her.